When you hear Oregon Trail, you might think low-tech covered wagons. But for Don Martin, covering the 2,000-mile stretch from Missouri to Oregon City is more than an old video game. It was time to do the whole trail. It's a dream realized. Don, who lives in Prineville, set off in April and hiked the whole thing in three months. Just don't offer him a pat on the back for it. Tens of thousands of eight-year-olds made this trip, and most of them did it barefoot. And that kind of puts what I did in perspective. It was hard, but it wasn't that hard. On his journey, Don traveled alone, except for his homemade supply wagon named Ollie and a stuffed ox. Ollie Ollie Oxenfree, get it? But he rode on top, he didn't pull it. Weather permitting, Don camped under the stars. During storms and high wind, he hunkered down in motels. He saw what high winds did to this irrigator. And then there were moments like these, coming round a bend to see the first good view of Mount Hood and seeing rock formations in Nebraska like Scott's Bluff. And for a lot of the people who came from farms in the Midwest, they had never seen anything like this in their lives. This was magical to them. And it's still magical today. So the remarkable thing is, why is it so hard today? And why have we forgotten it so completely? You can still see wagon ruts in some spots, but most of the Oregon Trail is gone, turned into roads or plowed over. And unlike the Appalachian and Pacific Crest Trails, there are few guides for the Oregon Trail. Don knows of less than a dozen people who've hiked it in recent decades. He wants that to change. One of the things that I'm doing is trying to put together a trail guide for people who might want to do the same thing and reconnect with the exp uh, experience of the pioneers that made the whole Western United States possible. And while shoes these days are softer and the roads much more firm, Don believes the key to crossing the Oregon Trail remains largely unchanged. Then and now was simply putting one foot in front of another for 2,000 miles and not stopping until you got to the end. Gotta love it. Don was clearly prepared for this hike. He spent 30 years in the Navy and has made other 2,000 mile treks, but this was definitely a unique journey. If you want to learn more about his adventure, he documented it in a trail blog, and we'll post that link for you on KGW.com. Dave, I'm going to stick to my 10 mile hikes. Yeah, me too. You know what? I'm just glad once he got to the Dalles, he didn't try to float down the Columbia River. Remember oh, no. that? Catherine uh, Cook. Yeah, dysentery. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Catherine Cook reporting. Thanks, Catherine. <laughs> no dysentery, no cholera. Let's take you outside on this Wednesday.